Hey, it's Mike over at FishYourAssOff.com and today what we're talking about is flounder fishing with bucktail jigs. This is the old staple. Uh, you know, people <laughs> have all these fancy lures and all these different things and these just piece of lead with some fur or some feather or some nylon hanging off of them catch the heck out of fish. Just about every fish. I don't know what it is about that design because I've never seen a furry looking fish like that in my life, but everything eats it. So I'm going to show you and teach you uh, some of the uh, best lures and techniques on catching flounder using a bucktail jig or any kind of jig action. I'm going to show you some of the ones because I make my own jigs uh, that I use. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me just show you the typical bucktail jig. There you go. Probably the best color right there too for, for uh, flounder. So that's a bucktail jig. That's all there is to it. Here's some of the ones that I make. Now these are flare hawk jigs that I make for catching snook. So there's some of mine right here. The white ones are good for clear water. And then I like a chartreuse or a pink when the water's a little, little murkier. And with these, what I would do if I was going to go flounder fishing is I would just, my hook ends right here, I would just cut the thread right here. I just cut this nylon thread right here, just a little bit past the hook, just enough to cover the hook. And then I would use it for a flounder jig. So it doesn't necessarily have to be bucktail, like actual buck fur. Uh, it, it can be nylon or anything else too, like these are. And the way you fish these, first of all, you want to add scent to it. This will work on its own, okay? But if you just put a little piece of shrimp on there, so a shrimp tip jig, or uh, put a little bit of Procure, which is some real stinky, uh, gelatinous, sticky stuff to this, you will catch more fish, okay? You just will. Scent, you just add one more sense to the fish. It's like, wow, that's weird looking. It's moving right. You know, it kind of looks right, uh, but it doesn't smell right. Oh, it smells right too, I want to bite it. So you're much more apt to get a strike if it smells too. So uh, a shrimp tip jig will catch the heck out of flounder. So, slow, all right. I am talking slow. So, if you're normally fishing a jig, you cast it out, you might be like, Right? Maybe that's a redfish retrieve or any sort of retrieve with or snook retrieve. That might be that, right? Okay? If you're fishing for flounder, you cast that up there. Slow. You're basically dragging it on the bottom, but you want to kind of hop it. No. Flounder are not speed demons. They are just not. You know, a snook, boom, it's going to move fast. Sure, a flounder might have a, a quick strike within this distance, but they're not going to swim. Oh, I got to get it, I got to get it. They're, they're just not going to do it. And, and their strike zone is basically the bottom 12 inches of the water column. So you have to keep your jig in that bottom 12 inches. Uh, gosh, maybe 18 tops, I wouldn't go much higher than 18, you're, you're getting out of their strike zone. They are a bottom feeder. They spend their world, their days, covered up in the sand. So you got to be fishing on do with the gravel, with the gravel or sand or mud or something because they want to bury down in there and kind of wait for stuff to come to them facing into the current. So, you know, the current's coming this way. You want to cast this way and just bounce your jig back to you and increase weight for the current and the depth okay well that makes sense right so you have to keep it on the bottom so if you're fishing an inlet where you know all the water gets forced through that little area 
Well, you're going to have to um, increase the weight. So we're you might be fishing with a three quarter ounce when you're fishing around, you know, a dock or or an oyster bar or something like that, or maybe a half ounce. Well, if you're fishing an inlet, now you're gonna have to step up to something like this, this size, which is an ounce and a half, right? You have to get it to the bottom. You have to get it to the bottom if you wanna catch some flounder. But all these places are great places. Uh, an oyster bar, you know, they're, they're there. They're, they're in the mud right by the oyster bar. You just gotta bounce it by the oyster bar without losing all your jigs. But if you're jig fishing, you're gonna lose a lot of jigs, <laughs> which is, why I make my own, you know, I make them a hundred at a time <laughs> because you're going to lose tons of jigs. But, uh, you know, this, this jig right here, this jig right here is going to catch snook. It's going to catch flounder. It's going to catch redfish. It's going to catch black drum. I mean, don't forget about jigs when you are fishing for, for any of these inshore species that we all love to catch. Jigs work wonderfully. Heck, if this was smaller, it would catch pompano and whiting. So, yeah, don't forget about a jig. A jig is an excellent, excellent lure to use uh, for catching fish, but it's especially good. You know, if I was going to go head to head, there's, there's one, one bait and one bait only that beats a, a bucktail jig tipped with a shrimp. You know, and then I would say it's this one. It's a gulp and a jig head like this. This is the only fake thing, fake lure that I think would beat a bucktail, uh, a bucktail jig in a head-to-head -head contest, and probably not by much. And really, the only reason that it would is because the um, gulp juice has more odor molecules than the piece of jig. I mean, the piece of shrimp that you'd have on your jig. So it's just because it stinks so much more that this is, this will probably outfish this, but it's close. This one's definitely first, but this would probably be my second bet if I couldn't get anything like this. I guess is what my point is. So the gulp will probably work better, but if you don't have gulps, use your bucktail jig tipped with a piece of shrimp. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. But that's it. I just wanted to cover that one as far as catching flounder, you know, doing some flounder fishing with a bucktail jig. It's worked for 50 years. It'll keep working for another 50 years. Uh, it's just your presentation. When I see flounder fishermen not catching flounder, it's because of their technique. They are just reeling too fast. So like, oh, well, there's no flounder here. You know, you cast that thing out, God, it might take you a minute or two to get it back. Slow. Slow. Yeah, slow as you can pop. You can't fish a jig too slow for flounder. How about that? You can't do it. It's impossible. Slow. You'll catch flounder. Problem with flounder is they're hot, they barely hit. So you don't know, you're like, oh, am I hooked on a piece of weed or is that an oyster? Set up. If you, it went in doubt, set up. Cause a lot of times it's a flounder. You just kind of bit it and it's like, eh. And they just, they're, they're very weak strikers. They're weak fighters for that matter, but they sure are fun to catch and they're good to eat. So you set up too. You know, you think you, oh, what is that? Set up. Those are my tips for catching flounders with bucket, buck, geez, bucktail jigs. I can't even talk today. <laughs> bucktail jigs. Uh, but go to the website, www.fishyourassoff.com. We have all kinds of how-to information, how-to videos, how-to articles, all about inshore fishing, all about inshore fishing. I think that's it for today. So until next time, we'll see you then. All right, bye-bye.